Hey y'all and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and this video is a Crazy Sock Lady tutorial for how to do an afterthought heel. So I will make this intro short and sweet so we can jump right in with how to knit a true afterthought heel with no waist yarn. So I think that this method of doing a heel is best, the way that I use it the most is if I'm doing self-striping yarn, I can cut in, do that heel after I've knit my sock and it does not mess up the stripes on the front of the sock at all. So this is my favorite way to use an afterthought heel. I first learned to do an afterthought heel years ago from a Kirby Werby tutorial here on YouTube. So I will link that tutorial down below. You should head over and check it out as well. So in this tutorial, we're not only going to be going over how to cut in to do your heel using no waste yarn. I'm also going to go over how to measure for your heel, how to get the best fit for your heel. And I'll also go over a couple of tricks for how to adjust to the heel to get the best fit for you. There will be time stamps. If you look right down below this video, I'm going to have different sections of the tutorial times for those. So if you need to just skip ahead to, you know how to measure all of that, you know your perfect measurement, you just wanna know how to cut in the heel or how to finish off the heel, I will have stamps for that down below. And I will have times listed right down below this video in the down bar. So if you're coming to this tutorial and you don't wanna watch the tips and tricks or how to measure, you just wanna know how to do that heel, I will have different things listed and the times that you need to skip ahead to to find those so that you don't have to sit through the whole tutorial or try to skip ahead to find different sections. So I hope that you guys are ready and excited. Don't be nervous, I've got you on this. We are going to walk through every single step of doing an afterthought heel. So let's get started. Before we jump in and actually do our afterthought heel, I wanna chat with you guys about the heel and talk to you about measuring and some different tips for troubleshooting issues with the heel fitting. So right here I have a finished pair of socks so that you guys can see what the afterthought heel looks like. Here is the beginning of our heel. Comes right down through here. It's the beginning. It's just this portion right here. And you can see with self-striping, it's fun. It kind of creates a little bit of a bullseye effect if you continue with that self-striping. And I've done this here on a patterned sock. That is a question I get a lot. And yes, you can do an afterthought heel on a patterned sock. If you have the patterning on the back of the leg, I just suggest not joining the patterning for a couple of rounds before you would actually place your markers for your heel. And here it is off of a blocker so that you can see what it looks like. It does fold up rather nicely and you can see it looks just like our toe. If you're a cuff down sock knitter and you're familiar with how to knit a toe, that's the same kind of decreases that we are going to be doing. And you can use an afterthought heel for any type of yarn. It does not have to be self-striping. I prefer to do it with self-striping. If I'm not doing self-striping, I really like to do a heel flap and gusset, but I just love with self-striping that it does not break your stripes up. Down the front of your sock, everything will stay the same. And then you just cut in to add this heel and it doesn't break up those stripes at all. So that is how an afterthought heel looks. Now let's talk about measuring for an afterthought heel. So over here I have a pair of socks that I'm working on. This one still needs a toe, so this is what we're gonna be measuring with. This one right here, I have completed, other than adding in the heel. So the tube itself is done. I have my markers placed for adding in the heel. And we will talk about how I place those in just a moment. But this one is just ready for me to cut in. This is what I'll be cutting into when it's time for us to do the heel. So the one that we're gonna be measuring on is it's ready for the toe. I have my measurements down and I know where to place my heel. So this one is ready for the toe. And what I've done here on the front, I just place a marker every 10 rounds as I'm knitting. That for me just makes it easier to count my rounds than you can count them by tens. 
and then I can make that second sock to match this. So it takes out some of that having to measure on that second sock. You can just know, okay, I did 60 rounds for the legs. For the leg, I'm gonna do 60 rounds for the leg on the other sock. And then the same for the foot. I know I did 62 rounds on this foot, so I'll need to do 62 rounds for the foot on the other sock. And then I like to place a different marker right here. This is my end of my leg and beginning of my foot. So that's just a little tip for counting rounds on your socks. And with my heel placement, so an afterthought heel, you could completely knit this tube, not even place markers here. And then when you're done and you've, maybe you wanna use up all the yarn that you have, you don't wanna worry about a heel placement, you wanna figure that out later. You can certainly do that. Then you'll just measure from the end of your toe, and I can show you on that one that I've finished, the toe one. You can measure from the end of your toe Say these markers were not here. You can measure from the end of that toe back up to here and then place markers in for where you are going to cut in for the heel. Now, how do you know where to place your heel? That is a question I get a lot with afterthought heels. My, the, Best suggestion that I can give, it can be a bit of trial and error. So if you knit a sock, you do an afterthought heel, it doesn't fit exactly right. I don't want you to get discouraged with that because I think sock knitting when you're starting out is a bit of trial and error. No matter what heel you're doing, no matter what kind of sock you're doing, you have to find the best fit for you, the best heel for you, the best amount of rounds to do for your foot. You just have to Figure that out with trial and error, trying one thing, and if that doesn't work, adding a couple rounds here and so forth. It really is just trial and error. And then once you find that perfect fit, I feel like you're set. So don't get discouraged if your first afterthought heel does not fit perfectly. I'm gonna talk here in a moment after I show you how to measure. I'm gonna talk here in a moment about different ways that you can troubleshoot and fix that fit. Maybe things you can try the next time. So my biggest suggestion on where to place your heel is think about your toe, because like I said, our afterthought heel looks like a toe. So think about your toe and how much room you leave for your toe. For me and the size socks that I knit, I leave 1.75 inches for my toe. So if you typically knit a size large, this is speaking for my patterns, if you knit a size large and you leave two inches for your toe, leave two inches for your heel. So my toe is 1.75 inches, and so that's what I'm gonna leave for my heel. Here's where my marker is. So I know that this is where I need to place my heel just from many times of doing that. So like I said, if you're gonna knit a tube and then place your markers in, figure out your heel later, that is how you can do that. You measure from the tip of this toe back and say this is six inches here and you know you need to leave two inches for your toe, you would place your heel at the four inch mark. Obviously, I don't think that would be long enough for anyone but a little child's toe, but <laughs> that is just some easy math there to figure out. You wanna make sure that you leave, whatever you leave for your toe, leave that for your heel. So the way that I like to do it, I have knit a whole tube before and then placed markers. I don't prefer to do that. I, I guess that is a true afterthought heel. You're not thinking about the placement of the heel at all as you go and you just do it at the end. I like to give a little bit of thought and place my markers as I knit down the leg. So I know that I like a 60 round leg. So I count down through here and that's where my 60 rounds was. So when I get to, usually I do it on round 62 and knit a couple of rounds past 60, then I will, go back a couple of rows just to have my you know my needles will be in there i'll place the marker down a couple of rounds onto round 60. and what i like to do let's look at the back of the sock here so i'll come to the back i place one of these little light bulb stitch markers on 
the last needle over, or the, excuse me, the last stitch over here, the first stitch over here, and then the center stitch. So I do 64 stitches for my sock. So there'll be 32 stitches on this back. So I would do it on the first stitch, the 16th stitch, and then on the 32nd stitch. This to me is the absolute easiest way to make sure I am picking up that heel on the back of the sock. Maybe it's a little bit of OCD in me, but I just prefer to place my markers as I go. I know what I like for the leg, put those in, then I know it's gonna be super easy for me to make sure I'm going into this first stitch, picking up the last stitch, and then I've already got a marker here to mark the center stitch that I'll snip up. So as I'm knitting down and I've placed my markers, then it's easy for me to measure for where to start the toe. I know that I need to leave 1.75 inches for my heel and 1.75 inches for my toe. So there is a little bit of math. You have to figure that out, what your total foot length is, and then subtract 1.75 inches for the heel, 1.75 inches for the toe, and then what you're left with, that is where you are going to start doing your toe. I have one of these sock rulers, and I'll put a link down below to where you can purchase one of these. I've had this one for quite a while, and the thing that I love about these, it makes it super easy to measure your socks, but you can, and also I wrote on these so that I know exactly where I need to put in my toe. And then down here I have marked, like this is for my husband, Eric, when I do his socks, I know that's where I need to start the toe for his, not with an afterthought heel, but these are just with a regular heel flop and gusset. And then that's where I need to start the toe when I'm doing a heel flap and gusset. So I have it marked on here for my afterthought. And then if I'm using one of these, I like to slide it inside the sock. Just come down here and make sure the tip of it is right where my center marker is for my heel placement. And then just make sure that's lining up with what I've marked for the afterthought heel. And then I know that's where I need to start my toe for the afterthought heel. So it just makes it super easy to measure with one of these sock rulers. Now the last thing I wanted to chat with you about before we cut in and start our heel is troubleshooting a bit. So you do your first afterthought heel and it doesn't fit quite right. Like I said, don't get discouraged. I remember the first couple I did and they did not fit quite right. I had to make some adjustments and I will show you the adjustment that I make for mine once we get going. But there are a couple of different things that you can do. So when I do my afterthought heels, let's grab this one here. The first one that I did, I struggled with room around this area. It was way too tight and this just did not sit well on my heel. So my fix for that was to not start in immediately doing the decreases. I did some plain knit rounds, and I'll show you that when we go to start our heel, but I did some plain knit rounds before starting the decreases, and that added some extra room into this area for me. And that may be something that you have to troubleshoot to see how many plain knit rounds you need. I know that four, knit rounds before the decreases works the best for me. You may not need any, but if you're someone who finds that in a lot of patterns, you have a tighter pull around here, I would suggest adding a couple. I know heel flap and gusset fits the best for me because it allows that extra room in this area. So adding that, just a few extra rounds of plain knitting before decreasing really, really works. Then maybe you have issues with this. Maybe you need it to be a little smaller, little go a little smaller. This is too big on your heel. You could just do a couple more rounds of decreases. And that again, maybe something you have to troubleshoot to see what the best amount to decrease down to is, but that's another way that you could fix that. 
And as always with knitting socks, if you're having an issue with getting your heel to fit properly or something like that, please just message me or you could leave a comment down below this video. I love when I can help somebody troubleshoot and then help them find the best sock fit for them. So I'm always happy to help. If you let me know what area you're having issues with, maybe I can, can help you figure out the best method to go about getting a better fit for an afterthought heel. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the toe on this so that I have my yarn and then we can cut in on our sock to do our afterthought heel. So go ahead and get your stuff ready. You'll need your, I like to do it magic loop. So you'll need your 32 inch cable in whatever size that you're doing. You'll need a small pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. So I will meet you back here. I finished the toe on this sock. So now we are ready to add the heel. I did take all of the markers that were on the front of the sock off. I wait to do that until both socks are done and just waiting on the heels. And so the only markers that are left are the three that I placed in where I knew I wanted my heel after the 60 rounds of the leg. So now we are ready to pick up our stitches. So we are going to be picking up the stitches. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Perfect. On the row above where the markers are and the row below where the markers are. And again, I placed three markers here for the ease of knowing exactly where my first stitch is and exactly where my last stitch is. So we're gonna grab our needles here. And I'm gonna start with the bottom. And we're gonna be picking up the right leg. You can see this is the first stitch. So we're gonna go just right below that. And that's gonna be the first stitch we pick up. And we're gonna pick up the right leg of each stitch going across. And I'm gonna be picking up 32 stitches. You just want to make sure you're staying in the same row across. And I found that's another thing that's helpful with three is it gives me a middle point to check as well. Like when I get across to this point, have I went up into that row? Because you can get off, you wanna make sure you're staying in that same row. So that's just another little helpful thing there with having three markers placed. Almost there. And then when we get over here, just pull that marker up. And then since that marker is there and I know it's on the 32nd stitch, I know I have 32 stitches there. And I'm ready to pick up the row above the markers. going to pull this out so that the needle is out of there, that it's just the cord in there. It makes it easier to pick up if you do that. If you leave the needle in there, it just, it's a bit bigger than the cord and it just takes up a bit more room. So now we're going to come to the top of the marker and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to pick up the right leg of each stitch. We can see that's our marker. So we want to go one above, just right above it. And pick up the right leg of every stitch across this row. And if you need to, if you find you're poking too far in when you go in and you are afraid you're picking up the stitches on the front of the sock, you can just stick your hand up inside of there and just see I've got my fingers right here. Just kind of make sure you're not poking all the way through and picking up the stitches on the front of the sock. 
I have done that before. <laughs> Then we are to the marker in the middle and that's just a good checking point to make sure you are on track going across the row. And we are to our last stitch. So there it is. Let me pull this out and show you what it looks like here. So you can see we've picked up stitches down below and above the row that we have marked. So now it is time for the part that I think scares everyone the most with the true afterthought heel. We are going to cut this stitch right here. So I think the easiest part of having this marker in here is it helps pull that stitch out. And if you've marked it and you know you've only gotten that stitch, you've not grabbed anything else, you know that that's all that you're going to be cutting. So we're only gonna cut one leg of this stitch. So just stick your scissors into one leg there. And you can kind of just double check, you know, if you want to pull it around and make sure you've only got one leg, you've not got any stitches underneath. Double check before you cut and then just cut it. That marker comes right out. Now we are going to unravel these stitches. I like to stick my hand up in the center of the sock. Hopefully those needles won't make too much noise on the table here. And I like to leave the cord only in at this point. I don't pull my needles back into this just yet. So I like to use my finger on the back here, see it in there, and use the back of a tapestry needle. You could pull your needle around and use that if you want. Whatever you like, this is just what I like to use. I usually have one on hand because I know I'm gonna be weaving in ends and kitchenering this heel. Then we're just grabbing the yarn, sticking your end of your tapestry needle or whatever you're using through there, pulling it out. Go to the next one. You just keep grabbing that strand and pulling it out. We're gonna pull out almost all of these. We are actually going to leave two stitches in And that's gonna help us close up any gaps that we might get in those corners. And I leave these markers in until I'm down to these last two, till I've gotten what I need to pull out because it helps me again to know that that's the first stitch. It's marked. So then this next V is the second stitch. So I know I want to leave the first one and the second one in. And even I've done so many afterthought heels and I still always leave this in until I've unraveled both sides and I know that I've gotten it done correctly. It's just really, really helpful to me to have that first stitch marked on each side. So one and two of that third one. And then I can see I've got first stitch, second stitch. That side's done. We'll take that marker out in just a moment. Now we're gonna come and do this side. And we're just doing it the same way, pulling out each strand. And this does give you two ends that you have to weave in, but that's not a big deal. I'm gonna show you that later. I 
yarn is splitting there. I accidentally stuck the needle into it and now it's, <laughs> it's splitting on me. Did it again. It can be hard to, I'm trying to look at the, um, the screen on the camera here to make sure everything's centered, but it's harder to see <laughs> what you're doing. This one's very splitty. Okay, we're getting close here, so I always like to check. First stitch is marked, second stitch. So I only have this last strand right here to pull out. You can see my two stitches there. All right, so we're gonna put the tapestry needle aside. We do not need it right now. I'm gonna take these last two markers out. And that was the scariest part, guys. So if you've made it, that was the scariest part right there. That's when you'll find out if you've made a mistake. But I really think if you place these three markers, it's super helpful. And keeping you on track and making sure you're putting your needles into the correct place that you're cutting the correct stitch it is just so helpful okay so now we need to let me pull this back turn this around so that we're set up to knit our heel magic loop these ends i'm just tucking them into the center so this is where our heel is going to go we are going to push our needles up into there so that we're ready to knit. I forgot to mention one thing that I always like to have on hand is just a little marker that you can place, a little progress keeper. And I like to place this right here. Get it through the stitch there. I like to place that right there so that I know this is my beginning of round because I tuck all my tails in here so that they're already on the inside of the sock and they're ready. I don't have to like pull them through from the outside. They're in the sock ready for where they're going to be woven in. So I place a marker here to know this is my beginning of round. Just keeps me on track as I'm going. Now we need to get our yarn ready. So I showed you on this sock. Actually, let me grab the one on them blocker here that it makes a cool bullseye effect and the best way that I think to do that and to make it kind of look seamless here is whatever yarn color is right here that's what you want to start your heel whip so you can see I have cut in in one of the zombody stripes. That's what these are called for this yarn. So that's where I have cut in. So I just want to match that up. And I just thought I would show you guys this in case anyone asks how you match up your heel stripes. I just pull out the yarn until I get to the beginning of the stripe that's going to match this. Not the end, not the center, the beginning of the stripe. So I'm just gonna do that really quickly and then I will meet you right here to start. So we are ready. I didn't have to unwind too much. I was right about at this point in the stripe sequence. So I just had to take out the green. And now we are ready to start knitting our heel. So this is only a two row, or excuse me, a two round repeat that we're gonna be going. Just leave a little bit of a tail there. We're ready to start knitting. And like I said, the adjustment that I make, I need a little bit of extra room across the top of my foot and in my right in that heel area. So the way that I do that with an afterthought heel is I knit four rounds of just knitting. I do not start my decreases right off the bat. So I'm gonna do four rounds of plain knitting. And that's something that you can adjust. You may not need that extra room. If you already know I don't need any extra room, you may go ahead and start the decreases. And it's just some trial and error to figure out what works for you. Maybe you only need one, two rounds of plain knitting. Maybe you need more than four. 
I think that can be the scary thing with some people is that they get discouraged after their first sock doesn't fit. But really with any method of sock knitting, it's it can be trial and error. You've got to figure out the best fit for you. And then once you figure it out, it's easy peasy. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knit these four plain rounds and then I will meet you here to do our decreases. I've knit my four plain knit rounds and you can see I've tucked that end from where I started this working yarn down inside as well so that every end is down inside of the sock and it'll be there when I need to weave it in. And if you see things loosened a bit at both of these spots, don't worry, you, you have your ends inside and it's just those ends that are gonna need tightened when we weave in our ends on the sock. So don't worry and think that you're gonna have some gaps there. Everything's gonna tighten up when we weave in those ends and you will have no gaps with this heel. So we are ready to do our first decrease round now. It's a two round repeat. The first one is the decrease round. We're going to knit one, slip, slip, knit. And then we're going to knit across needle one to the last three stitches. And that is where we're gonna do our other decrease. If you do cuff down and you're familiar with the decreases on a toe, you're doing them in the same places that you would on your toe. So at the beginning and end of each needle. We're at our last three stitches, so we're going to knit these two together. Knit one. We're gonna turn our work for needle two. We're gonna do the same thing. Knit one, slip, slip, knit. And then knit across to the last three stitches. We're at the last three, so we're going to knit two together. Knit one. And that is our decrease round. So the first round is the decrease round. The second round is a plain knit round, meaning you knit all the way around, no decreases. So you're gonna repeat those two rounds until you have 24 stitches total, 12 on needle one and 12 on needle two. And once you do that, we are ready to kitchener our toes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn you guys loose to repeat the decrease round, plain knit round, until you have 24 stitches total. And then I'm gonna show you how to kitchener your heel and finish off all of those ends that we have on the inside of the sock. I've just finished my decreases. I'm down to 12 stitches on the front needle and 12 stitches on the back needle. So now we are ready to Kitchener up this heel. If you have Kitchener to toe, we're just gonna do that the same way. I'm going to cut my yarn, leave a decent tail there. If you've never done a Kitchener stitch, we will need a tail to close this together. I'm just going to put my yarn onto my tapestry needle here. And we're gonna get started. So there are four steps to the Kitchener stitch. The first one we're gonna do, the first stitch on the front needle, we're going to go into that knitwise, pull the yarn through, and then we're going to take that stitch off of the needle. We're gonna go into the second stitch on the first needle, purlwise, pull the yarn through. Then we're gonna to move to our back needle. The first stitch we're going to go in purlwise, 
and then we're going to pull that stitch off. Still on the back needle, we're going to go into this next stitch knitwise, and we're going to leave it on. And that's the fourth step. So after the fourth step, give it a little tug to tighten up any gaps you may have there. So we're just going to repeat these four steps across. Step one is go into the first stitch on the front needle knitwise, pull it off. Purl wise, leave it on, then go to the back needle, purl wise, take it off, knit wise, leave it on. So we're just going to repeat these across. You know, there are different ways to do the Kitchener stitch where you have kind of like a setup thing at the beginning and then you do a special thing at the end. I've done all of those and I always find that they leave little dog ears on the side. So if you've done those ways, you'll see I did not do the setup at the beginning. I just jumped right in. Just makes for a neater beginning. Then I'll show you at the end when we get down there what we're going to do to make a little bit of a neater end. Like I said, this point for your heel, I look like the feel and fit of decreasing down to 24 stitches total, 12 on each needle. You may find you need something a little smaller, especially if you're doing it for a kid or something. So you may do a couple more decrease rounds, but just remember that's going to lengthen your heel as well. to the end here and always remember after that fourth step after the back needle where you slip it through knitwise leave it on give it just a little extra tug to tighten it up We're at our last four and we're just going to do them as we have been processing each one as normal. And we're down to our last two so we are just going to take our needles out. That is the difference. I do not do anything special there at that point. I'm just going to take this marker out really quick. We don't need that any longer. And you can see at the beginning, did not leave a big dog ear. At the end, we have this little bit here, but we are going to fix that. So I, to do this part, I like to stick my hand up inside of the sock. I do this for the toe and for the heel. And then we zoom back in here. There we go. So I can see that my yarn is coming from over here. I'm actually gonna turn this around so it's easier for you guys to see. There we go. I've got the my pointer finger right here. You can see that my yarn came from over there. So I need to pull this around to close it up. 
So I just kind of follow where that yarn would come. If I just pulled it naturally, where would it go? And if you look there, pulled it there, it should go down inside of there. So I just stick my needle right down into there, pull it through on the inside. There we go. Closed up on both sides. Zoom back out there and now I will flip it inside out to show you what we're dealing with on the inside. Do you have some ends to weave in? So I've already woven the end. As soon as I finish my toe, as soon as I kitchener it, I put that yarn in just how you saw and weave that in right then. So I'll do the same here. And the way that I like to weave in my ends is just making sure I'm going into the backs of the stitches. I like to use a sharper tapestry needle like this. I'll put a link for one below if I can find one online. And I just like to go into the backs of the stitches. So I'm not sure if you can tell there that I've kind of split the stitch. I make sure that I'm not going through on the front side. And I go down for three or four stitches and then I go back up for three or four stitches. Just making sure that I'm going into the backs of those stitches. That's it right there. So then I will cut the yarn. And that takes care of the end where we kitchenered our heel. So now we need to take a look at the ends that we have left from where we cut our yarn. So we have one over here. That's from where we unraveled. And then we have two over here from where we unraveled and from where we started our working yarn for the heel. So we'll start on this side. What I like to do with these two ends here is just take them, I pull on them just a little, like I said, because those stitches can get a little loose there. So not a huge yank, you don't wanna pull the stitches way too tight, but just pull on them to where you can kind of tell they're tightened up. And then what I will do with these two is just do one little knot, makes sure they're tight there. And then we're gonna weave in our ends just how I did after I kitchenered that heel. So I'm just gonna go up for three or four stitches again, only going through the backs of that stitch for those stitches. And then go back down. That's how I weave in my ends. I'm gonna weave in these other two and then show you what the heel looks like when we flip it back right side out. All right, there is our afterthought heel. We've finished it up. Let me put it on a blocker here so you can see how it looks all stretched out. So here is what our finished sock looks like with our afterthought heel. You can see there we have no gaps, no holes, in the corner of our heel and it made a nice little bullseye effect with lining up those stripes like that. So I hope that you guys found this tutorial helpful for how to do an afterthought heel, how to measure, where to place it, and then how to go throughout the process of doing it. If you have any questions or you need any help with the fit, please feel free to comment down below the video or I have all of my contact information for email, Instagram, all of that listed down below this video. Just get a hold of me and I would be happy to help troubleshoot on how you can get the best fit for your afterthought heel. Thanks for watching.